One year ago today, the Cincinnati Bearcats made history. And since then, it's been even better. Our Locked On Bearcats, your daily podcast on the Cincinnati Bearcats. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, thank you so much for making Locked On Bearcats your first listen every day, free and available everywhere that you get your podcasts, including right here on YouTube. Don't forget, or right here if you're watching on YouTube, but also free and available wherever you listen to your podcast. My name is Alex Frank, your host each and every day here on Locked On Bearcats, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Thank you for making us your first listen every day on this Friday, April 28th. We are 127 days away now from the Bearcats' first game against Eastern Kentucky on Saturday, September 2nd at historic Nippert Stadium. On this day last year, the Cincinnati Bearcats made history. Sauce Gardner was the fourth overall pick. The first Bearcats player taken in the first round since 1971. But you know what's been really amazing about that? is that Sauce Gardner has been better than you thought he was going to be. Maybe better than you thought he was going to be. Certainly better than I thought. I didn't know if he was going to do great in the NFL. But what's so amazing is, and I listened to this, inter- I listened to Tony Pike and Austin Elmore the day after the NFL honors. And Sauce Gardner has had three items, he w- or three goals he wanted to check off this year. Defensive Rookie of the Year, check. First Team All-Pro, check. There was one other one. Defensive defensive Rookie of the Year, check. First Team All-Pro, check. Oh, what was the other one? Pro Bowl, check. Got all three. We got all three. I mean, it's amazing when you think about A player like his caliber. And he smiles a lot. He's fun to be around. But there's a a competitive, chippy, edgy side to him. And it comes from having been sixth on the depth chart. And you rise all the way to fourth overall pick. Number one quarterback in the country. And now you are... Maybe the best corner in the NFL. Like when the NFL Top 100 voted by the players comes out in August. It's going to be very interesting to see, A, if he makes the list, and B, where he makes the list. It's just amazing to me. Like, I remember at this time last year, I was asking you all, could he be the next Darrell Revis? And based off what he did this past season, I mean, he has every reason to be maybe the best corner in New York Jets history. That's how good he is. And the hope is now that Aaron Rodgers is with the Packers, you're going to see him more in marquee games, prime time, Sunday night football. I guarantee you the Jets will have a Sunday night game this year. And the fact that he hails from Cincinnati, he came in as the scrawny sixth man on the de- sixth guy on the depth chart, and then he burst on the scene, put weight on, muscle with Brady Collins, became this shutdown corner. Nobody wanted to throw to him. And it's unbelievable. And you think about it one year from, and you think about it one year later, where this Bearcats draft class led by Sauce Gardner, you could argue that that, that, and Chad Brendel talked about this last year, you could argue that that weekend last year was the biggest thing that ever happened in this Bearcats football program. Maybe the university. Nine players get drafted, Third most of any program last year, and the only two that were ahead of him were LSU, predictable, and Georgia, also predictable, who had 15. The Bearcats had nine. Sauce Gardner going in the first round. I mean, how cool was it to see that? You know, him rocking the sauce chain, seeing him walk out on stage in Vegas, you know, drip flowing, and knowing that he's got a good team that he's going to in the Jets. It's great, isn't it? A team 
in a market like New York. Like, I was worried he was going to end up in Houston. I mean, and Houston, you know, big city, but come on. You want to play in New York with that personality? And the best part is he's a corner. He's not going to get scrutinized daily like a quarterback would. Instead, he's going to make quarterbacks throw to the opposite side of his side of the field. Of course, last year there were several other Bearcats who were selected. I want to talk about Desmond Ritter because speaking of quarterbacks, I think for as much as Sauce made history, Ritter might be the most uh, the most impactful pick on this program given his position. I'll tell you about that after I explain to you how this episode of Locked On Bearcats is brought to you by Built Bar. Looking for a delicious snack but don't want all the sugar and calories? Then you need the best tasting protein bar ever. Built. You gotta try this. If you're like me and want to make healthier snack choices but you don't want to compromise on taste, I've got just the thing for you. Built Bars and Built Puffs. Built Bars are healthy and taste amazing. Seriously. They taste so amazing, you won't think they're good for you. you got to try this. And what's ma- and what makes Bilt Bar so good? Well, for starters, they are all covered in 100% real dark chocolate. That's right, real chocolate. And they come in unbelievable flavors like churro, peanut butter brownie, and cookies and cream. I'm not sure how Bilt does it, but these bars taste like a candy bar while maintaining the amazing macros. And what's even better is that they are healthy. Listen to this. 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar with a whopping 17 grams of protein. And now... You don't need to wait to get a box for years. We've been talking about ordering your built bars at built.com, but now you can get them at your local Walmart or Sam's Club while you can still get your specialty flavors still at built.com. Head to your nearest Walmart today, walk to the pharmacy section and grab yourself a box of built bars. You can pick up a four bar box of cookies and green bar, double chocolate bar, or coconut puff. If you're close to Sam's Club, run in and grab a 13 bar box that are hit flavors brownie batter puff and churro puff. You can thank me. Later. I think of all the Bearcats drafted last year, and there were two before Desmond Ritter was taken in the third round last year by the Falcons. But I think given that Ritter's been named the start of this offseason, I think that Desmond Ritter is going to be the most impactful pick on this program because he's a quarterback, because of how much he progressed over four years, because I think he's going to be a really good pro quarterback. I really do. I'm excited to see what he can do in an Arthur Smith offense. Given that the Falcons drafted B. John Robinson last night, given that they've made some huge additions in free agency, both on offense and defense, given that they were competitive last year, and given the way they run the football, Ritter doesn't have to be great. Ritter just has to be really good, develop, not make mistakes, which as his career progressed, He didn't. I mean, he threw 33 touchdowns to seven picks his senior season. So it's not, it's not inconceivable for me to think that he can be this really good quarterback. And when you think about a quarterback coming from Cincinnati. I mean, we've seen quarterbacks come from Ohio State, um, Alabama, USC, schools you know or are considered blue bloods, but Cincinnati hasn't had that. But Desmond Ritter is that. And you think about how he got to Cincinnati, how he progressed, and how he got to the pros. That's what's most impressive to me about this. And in a draft class where the quarterbacks weren't anything special. I mean, Kenny Pickett was really good. And I think he's going to have a really good pro career with the Steelers. Desmond Ritter was the second quarterback taken. And he might turn out to be the best quarterback. Final thought. Final thoughts of the week. I want to say this. But I, what really also stands out to me about last year's draft class was how all, was how most of players are on contending teams. Uh, 
You think about Kobe Bryant on Seattle first year, they make the playoffs. Brian Cook was a, is a Super Bowl champion now, playing for the Chiefs. Not only did nine Bearcats get drafted, but a lot of them played in the playoffs. And obviously, Travis Kelsey and Jason Kelsey, you know, who were drafted long before last year's class. But it just shows you that the University of Cincinnati can develop players into professionals as well as any team in the country and or any program. And it makes you appreciate how talented the 2021 team was. When you think about how good they were in 2021 and how they blew teams out, could score at will, could play really good defense. And amidst all the pressure they faced, found a way into the college football playoff because of the talent, because of how good Sauce Gardner was, because of how good Desmond Ritter became, and Alec Pierce and his four-year growth, and Kobe Bryant. You know, we talk about Sauce Gardner. Kobe Bryant won the Jim Thorpe Award. And he was a fourth-round pick. So it makes you appreciate just how much talent was on that team. Now, this year's class is interesting because it's not as extensive as last year's, but I, I want to see Tyler Scott, and Russ mentioned it, Russ has mentioned it on this podcast. I want to see Tyler Scott go to a team that needs a receiver to help take the top off of defense, like the Chargers, maybe Buffalo. You don't know how long Stephon Dix is going to stay around. They have Gabriel Davis, who also came from the American. Tyler Scott played his college football career in the American, so maybe he can help the Bills' offense. With a guy like Ivan Pace, a team who needs you know, a hard-nosed linebacker who, and Dane Brugler's description of him in his draft guy was so good, described his on-field demeanor as violent, um, says that he tackles like a rattlesnake. That's some pretty strong descriptions there. With a guy like Josh Wiley, go to a team that needs a tight end. Maybe the Bengals draft him for insurance behind Irv Smith. You never know. I recorded this before the Bengals made their draft pick last night. Maybe he goes to a team that is in need of a tight end, like the Raiders. I'm not sure what they're going to do now that Darren Waller's gone, and sadly, Foster Moreau, we wish him all the best has leukemia. So, a lot to like about Josh Wiley. And then you think about Trey Tucker. I'd love for him to see him be on a team that needs a kick returner. He was a very good kick returner at Cincinnati. So, it's going to be really interesting to see where these Bearcats end up. Same with Arquan Bush. Dan Brugler graded him 6th, 6th, 7th round pick. Well, it's been a great week. I hope you all have a great weekend. I do want to take a minute. And everybody says this. Everybody says they have the best stock. Well, I can truly say, um, I can truly say that my dog is the best. Our dog and our family. So I want to take a minute and wish a happy third slash 21st in dog years birthday to my adorable red-haired golden doodle, Cooper. Cooper, I love you. You know, I always think you're the best. You know, I always think you're the best dog, and I just hope you enjoy every minute of your day on Sunday, your third birthday, 21st, which means you're legal to drink if you wish to get your paws on any alcohol. But Cooper, I love you, and I hope you have an amazing birthday on Sunday. Actually, we'll see him on Sunday, so that's going to be fun. Thanks for making Lockdown Bearcats your first listen every day. We are part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day. Next week, we got the usual suspects, Neil Meyer of the front office news, Russ Heldman from all Bearcats and Sports Illustrated, maybe Zach and Sean, my former co-hosts of Bearcast Media, and they've gone on to their great endeavors. So uh, have a great weekend, and I'll be back on Monday right here on Lockdown Bearcats in May, part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your team every day.